Well, it's been a minute, but I'm back at it and ready to pick up where I left off. Hey friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we're going to work on the Bright Side Quilt Along. This is a block of the month that is from Fat Quarter Shop and it is included in the monthly sew sampler boxes. This is something that I started back in April 2021, but with our move last year and all of the pandemic issues and supply issues, the sew sampler boxes have been a little delayed, so I am just now getting around to making the video for block number three. Don't worry, I am still going to do a video tutorial for every single one of these blocks if you're following along. If you are not a sew sampler member, you can still do this quilt along. I'll put a link in the first comment down below this video where you can pick up this pattern. Since this is not a free pattern, I can't give you the cutting instructions. So I've already starched on my fabric and I've cut it according to my blocks pattern and labeled it. And we're gonna pick up from that point forward and we're gonna put this block together. Let's get started. This is the pattern and up here, this is what the block is gonna look like. We're just gonna make a very simple friendship star. So I've got all of my fabric starched, cut out and labeled with these lovely purple pins. I actually find using these pins are a little bit more practical for my sewing setup than using alphabetes. If you wanna pick up a package of these, they're great. I will link them in the first comment down below this video. It comes with four sets of full alphabet on one side you have an alphabet, on the other side you have numbers, and you got four sets of them in one package. To start off with, it wants us to grab our fabric F, and then it wants us to draw a diagonal line corner to corner on the wrong side of that fabric. Then we're gonna take our fabric B and we're gonna make two units where we sew our fabric F to our fabric B. What I'm doing is called the stitch and flip method. That's basically where you take a piece of fabric and you draw on the diagonal and you stitch literally just about a thread or two next to that diagonal line. And that's gonna allow you to cut away, trim your seam allowance, and then flip open and press the piece that remains and it's going to complete your fabric. This is a very common practice when you're making things like flying geese, or sometimes if you're gonna make the one at a time version of half square triangles. Now that I have my fabric all sewn together, I'm gonna to test it to make sure that everything lined up properly before I trim away my seam allowance. What I like to do is put my finger in between the two layers and just gently nudge that back and very softly press this down into place. I'm not trying to permanently crease it, I just want it to kind of lay open. From the top side, I'm gonna look and make sure that this fabric does not show on this edge or this edge. And then, and this is key, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to look to see if that blue fabric from back here extends past either of these edges. If the fabric extends past when I'm looking at it from the top or from the bottom, it means I didn't quite get my diagonal just right when I was sewing it. And depending on how much it's extending past, you may want to consider ripping that seam and starting over. I will tell you, if it just hangs out a few threads, it's usually not that big of a deal. But if you're trying to be absolutely precise, this is a great method for testing your flip before you trim your seam allowance.
These little triangles are scraps. You could toss them if you wanted to, but if you stitch a quarter inch away from that long edge, you could have two extra half square triangle units that you could put into another project. Now that my seam allowance is trimmed, I'm just gonna flip it open and I'm going to press it. And there are instructions in the pattern that tell me how big my unit, now that I've sewn the corner onto it, should measure. Now I'm gonna take these two pieces that we just pressed and grab my fabric C squares and sew them on the right side of this unit and I'm gonna press it over to the square. I'll finger press it first just to get it to lay open. And now it's time to press those seams. We're done with these units, so we're going to set them aside for now. It wants us to take our fabric A square and our fabric E square and draw a diagonal line on the back side of our fabric A. and stitch a quarter inch away from the line on both sides while we have the right side of fabric E and fabric A together. To get our half square triangles, we've got to cut this apart so using a rotary cutter and a ruler, I'm just going to cut on the line that I just drew. Now I have two pieces, and when I open them up, I have a square that is equal parts of both of those fabrics that I just sewed together. We're going to have to press these, we're going to have to press our seams, so I'm just taking a minute to finger press the seam behind the darker of the two fabrics. This is known as pressing to the dark side. By pressing my fabric over to the dark side, I am helping to reduce the amount of darker threads that could make their way behind the lighter fabric in my quilt top while I'm manipulating all this fabric to build out this beautiful project. There are gonna be times when you're making blocks where you have to press to the lighter side. But if you ever have a choice, choose the dark side because that'll reduce the amount of threads that will bleed through in a lighter color. When I'm talking about color bleed, I'm actually not talking about the physical colors bleeding. I'm talking about the darker threads on the back side of your quilt. Those can have a tendency to make their way behind other lighter fabrics in your quilt and then make themselves known in the finished product by showing through that lighter fabric. <laughs> now we're going to square up our half square triangle units and I do that by grabbing a square ruler. I put the 45 degree line right on top of that seam where my two fabrics meet and I make sure I have some fabric extending off the top and the right side as well as past the line that I'm going to measure up to or square up to on the left side and the bottom. I trim the right and then the top I pull these little pieces away and then I flip this around. And now I put my line that I'm squaring up to right on that cut line of fabric that I had at the top and on the side. Now they're on the left and the bottom and I'm gonna trim up along the side and along the top. Now you'll notice when I'm doing this, what I'm really trying to look for is to make sure that this 45 degree line is on the two pieces of fabric at both corners of the block. If this seam were to be wobbly anywhere, I would want it to be more wobbly in the middle because that's not going to match up with anything. If I can make sure that the two pieces of fabric are meeting perfectly in the corner on both corners of the block, 
when I go to sew this half square triangle unit into my quilt overall, I'm going to have a better chance of keeping any nice points that this needs to produce in the finished quilt block. Our next step is to take our fabric D squares and draw a diagonal line corner to corner just like we did before on all four pieces of this fabric. Then we're going to take fabric G and we're going to line these up and sew two at a time. We want to set it up so that our drawn lines are going parallel to each other and we have fabric in opposite corners. So I'm going to put one in the top left and one in the lower right. I'm going to make sure that the lines are running parallel just like this. And then I'm going to stitch about a thread or two away from that line. I can put my finger in between these two pieces to make sure that it completes my square, both from the front as well as from the back. And if everything looks good, I can grab my ruler and my rotary cutter and trim away those extra pieces of fabric. Once I've trimmed my seam allowance on this, then I can press this open. And then I'm going to take my other two squares and orient them so I'm kind of starting to make this little bit of a diamond shape. I want the lines to go from these two points that I sewed on before and I want them to run parallel to each other. Now I'm going to open these pieces up and I should have a block that looks like a square in a square. This is also referred to as an economy block. I'm going to take a minute to make sure that this measures up to what the pattern says it should be. So I made a little boo-boo in step number one. Yeah, right at the very beginning. I'm going to leave it in, but I want to show you what I did. In step number one, we took our rectangle of our background fabric and our little square of our fabric E, I think it was, and we sewed on the diagonal line and trimmed that away. Well, this is all great, but it should have been set up so that it looked like this. Yeah. And the only reason why this makes a difference is because when I put my friendship star together, the points are supposed to be swirling clockwise. I've made a decision that I'm not going to put it together so that the points are swirling clockwise. I'm going to have them swirling counterclockwise because I don't want to redo this block. So I'm going to leave it in. And what I'm going to do is take my two strips that I made in step one and I'm going to 
set them up so that these angles that we sewed, these slants, are running parallel to one another. Then I'm going to take my little square and a square block, put that in the middle, and I'm going to take my half square triangle units and I'll put them in the block so that we're creating this diamond kind of shape. They're parallel here, they're parallel there. You should have your points kind of spinning all the way around the block. These are already sewn together and these are sewn together. So I'm going to sew this row together and then I'm going to sew all three rows together into my block. When I do this sewing, if I sew with the square and a square on top, then I can see that intersection where my threads meet to make my point of that really pretty blue in the middle. And if I just stay one or two threads to the right of that X, then I'll make sure that I'm keeping the point on my center blue square. How did I do? Not too bad. Let's grab the other one. Now my diagram actually has the seams for this row going in towards the middle, but I feel like there's a lot of bulk back here and it would be better if the center block was going out towards the half square triangle units. So for that reason, these two pieces that I got wrong at the very beginning, I'm just going to change the direction of the seam so that it's going behind that blue fabric instead of behind the white square. So what's essentially happening here is the top and the bottom row, the seams are going towards the middle of the block and the middle row, the seams are going to the outside of the block. And that's just going to let my seams nest just a little bit better. All right, there we have our three rows and now I'm going to sew them together. These seams will nest and these seams will nest and I don't have to worry about any seams nesting here because I didn't put this together using squares and half square triangle units. That's kind of cool. Now my block is all sewn together and it's time to give it a final press. I like to press all the seams out with my hands first and make sure everything looks nice and square, but I want to be careful that I'm not stretching any of the fabric. I just want to gently get it to lay flat. This allows me to feel for any twisted seams that might need to be adjusted or any gaps that might exist in my seam allowance. Then I'm going to come in with my hot iron and I'm going to really just apply some heat to all of those areas to help set the fabric's memory. But I'm not done at that point. My next step is going to be to make this block nice and flat. And this is how I do it. I grab my best press and I missed the finished block rather heavily because I love this stuff. I smooth it out with my hands to make sure that that's all over the entire block. And then I grab my iron and I just apply heat to the entire block to really set everything in place. This best press is going to make the block super, super flat even those areas where I have a lot of seams and it's going to add some body to my fabric 
so that it feels more like a stiff piece of fabric rather than something a little flimsy. And I find by using Best Press, my fabric doesn't fray as much. The last step is just to square it up and then we're all done. So there we have it, our finished quilt block. This is block number three. Yes, my star legs are going in the opposite direction, and that actually does mean this is not a friendship star. I think it's called a spinning star. It has a different name, but the reality is it's gonna look just fine in the overall quilt. I'm leaving this in. At the end of the day, the only way somebody's going to know that this isn't the right block is if they compare the quilt to the original pattern or the original quilt and look at every single block and every single seam and then point it out. And if they've got time to do that, more power to them. <laughs> I'm not going to hold them any grudges. But for me, this is good enough. I'm going to put it in my bin and call block three done. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because block four is coming real soon. Bye.